But the machine knows that and the machine exists to perpetuate itself. That's the yeah. only point is to maintain power. Mm -hmm. um, these are incompetent people with no other prospects in life other Correct. than running the machine. So well, not um, all of them are incompetent. You know, well, when, when I see what tech they're good is at doing, machine running. Yeah. When, when I see what tech is doing, though, you, you even see it now because I see, you know, just it, it, you know, the algorithm. It's like it'll show me just enough of what I want to see, but never promote anything else. You know, right. and my meta platforms. I haven't grown in three years, and yet everyone that comes up to me, hey, you got the greatest Instagram I've ever seen. So, so the people who are already following me will see my stuff. So it appears. It's almost like it's AI designed to to let you think you're not being censored or that you're able to see the stuff that you want, oh, I'm aware. but they're preventing that growth. <laughs> you're, you're well aware of that. So, yes. you know, the evolution of that is making it hard. You know, in, in 16, 17, 18, when I was starting to get censored by, you know, let's call it Twitter 1.0, you know, they're like, well, how do you know you're being said? I was like, well, because yesterday I got 7,500 retweets on a post. Today I got three. And it's, you know, like <laughs> I do my own social. When I hit that button, I know what it's going to do. I know when it's, okay, that's a decent post. That's, I don't know, that's hot. That's going to go big. And it's like when, when it goes big for about 30 seconds and then it's like, er, just you, you see exactly what they're doing, but they're, they're coming up with better ways gotcha. to make it appear as though they're not censoring uh, while, while still, you know, continuing to perpetuate and push, you know, the ideals that they, they espouse and value. No, no one interfered in the last election more than Mark Zuckerberg. Or Google. Let's talk about how we got into the situation with the Terrence Howard podcast. We do a guided tour of science, and the guided tour is a huge danger to the public support of science. Let me explain. If you say, I went to France and I toured Versailles, I saw Versailles. Did you really see Versailles? Do you know how many rooms are in Versailles? Did you visit them all? You know, what, what percentage of the grounds did you have access to? So my claim is, is that we're doing the same thing with science. And let me say how it relates to Terrence Howard's podcast. Terrence Howard went off the guided tour and he found all sorts of rooms that experts know exist, but that the public is sort of misled into thinking aren't there. So give me, I'll give you a very simple example. The periodic table. There is no the periodic table and everybody cares about periodic table stuff should know that there is no the periodic table the physicist's favorite version of the periodic table is called the i don't know whether it's Janet or Jeanette because i've never heard it said even once in my presence left step periodic table but there are multiple periodic tables having to do with the complexity of electron orbitals and when terence howard tells you you know oh i'm looking at the the Walter Russell periodic table and it's a spiral okay well you say spirals right but the issue is let me tell you something else he's gonna say he's gonna say well if there are vibrations in atoms then there's also vibrations in music and so everything that is a an atomic vibration is also therefore a musical vibration you know um, Milton Babbitt uh, I think explored this at Princeton in the music department and his, his student Stanley Jordan, who I met, he and I discussed that Stanley Jordan, who's a brilliant guitarist, was mining this for inspiration. What is, what, what, what do the molecules sound like? So that's not crazy, right? So it's not fair. Well, wait, 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 wait. It's not fair to say, okay, well, this guy is just like loop-de-doo because he knows about a spiral periodic table or he's comparing the sound of a vibration to something in atomic physics furthermore but eric you would never say that stradivarius played an incredible uh, cesium note i mean it only goes one way and and you no. never have it go the other way from woo to non-woo it's always from non-woo to no, 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 and no, they no. are from woo to non-woo when kakuli saw a snake eating its tail and decided that that was 
the inspiration for benzene, right? There are ways in which Wu ends up as non-Wu. So, again, the thing is, I don't... You and I can also have a different perspective. You may say that there is no instance of Wu becoming non-Wu. I don't mind disagreeing, but I warn you, I know a lot of history. The, the thing that I'm going to say is yeah. that um, it pays not to rush off Terrence Howard's appearance with the back of our hands. And let, let me say where I was headed with this. The circle of fifths in music is not a circle. It's a spiral. And the reason for that is that you can't have both a perfect octave and a perfect Pythagorean fifth as part of an even-tempered scale. Number theoretically, it just can't work. And as a result, if, you're, if you choose special numbers of notes, namely 12, 29, and 53, you can get a great, you can get a perfect octave and a nearly perfect third. Those special numbers cause that, uh, sorry, a nearly perfect fifth. Those special numbers have that property. Most people don't know that that's true. If they sit down at a piano, they see 12 notes on it. So what happens when Terence, for example, figures out that lots of things are true that aren't well known? There is no the periodic table. There is a spiral one. There is no circle of fifths. There is a spiral one. And you can associate tones with vibrations and molecules with vibrations and frequencies. You take all of that and you push it together and you create this delicious amalgam where everything is connecting to everything. And this is part of the pleasures of the overly associative mind. talking about YouTube censorship, Terrence Howard, and my trap game with the Remington Model 1100. YouTube censorship is taking a new direction. Uh, the issue relates to new YouTube rules regarding firearm-related content receiving age restrictions. So as much as they want to say it's just an age restriction, Guaranteed these restrictions will lessen algorithm recommendations for this content on all levels. Because it's advertiser-related, advertisers don't care where your restriction is. If your content is restricted, it's going to receive less ad attention. And less ad attention is some is our videos that YouTube is going to recommend to people in general less because... It's all about the money. That's what it is. It's just all about that revenue from the advertising dollar is the bottom line. So that's YouTube's take on it. But I know, I've been around long enough to know, censorship of any kind in the name of safety for children is the oldest trick in the book to limit free speech, sharing of ideas, that don't prescribe to the rule makers agenda the think of the children game it's been played a million times i'm not fooled youtube's not caring about the children they're caring about your content that's the bottom line and like don jr was just saying um somebody might say to you like it's like yeah what are you blaming youtube you know make some better content you know like you're, you're blaming youtube because nobody watches your videos it's not that. It's that as the content creator, you have the ability to look at the analytics and you can see behind the curtain to exactly what's going on as far as uh, the performance of these videos, who's watching it, when they're watching it, everything. It's amazing how, how much hands-on they give you as far as looking at your demographic. You know, And when you see these changes happen where all of a sudden the brakes go on 
where your content is it's receiving views that are rising exponentially and then just all of a sudden it's like someone flips a switch and it's gone and it tanks like how could that happen if it's just people watching it if it's just demographics it's kind of obvious that somebody just turned the dial or flipped the switch and uh, that's what don jr was talking about you can see it um, you can see it so we move along to terrence howard been intrigued by Ten terrence howard for years he was uh, on the joe rogan podcast and once again i'm sitting there is this guy crazy is he not crazy is he a genius i'm never sure what to believe with this guy it's always interesting to listen to and he sh he's certainly believes what he's talking about and and uh he seems confident enough and if he is fool if he is just clowning everybody it's it's a hell of a job it's still entertaining to watch but I don't know what to make of this guy, you know. Uh, I just, I'm not smart enough to know anything about what he's talking about. Uh, uh, to know, uh, to be able to tell if he's, uh, if there's any legitimacy to what he's talking about. But I did start to see a huge proliferation of Terrence Howard is crazy videos on YouTube. And I'm thinking to myself, this, this they're letting through. There's no algorithm to stop these videos. What? Why does YouTube want me to believe Terrence Howard is crazy so much? Why Why are there 19 recommended videos about how crazy he is? I started to look further. Found out that Terrence Howard actually has about 100 patents. Patents is what we do on this channel. Patents are what we at least you know gun patents right we're pouring through these patents looking at different little different things at least if you're doing your homework i'm telling you to look at these patents you better be um so i start looking at his patents i said well this is a language i can understand i don't understand quantum physics and chemistry but i, I do understand these patents let me take a look lo and behold i found one for a gun take look this up do this one google patents in the search bar, put in US 11460260, B as in boy, 2. It's a patent applied for. He's the inventor. He's the assignee. Terrence Howard invented a gun. And he didn't just invent a gun. Like He took the regular the gun that we've been using for 100 years and just like, you know, invented a different type of bolt hold open or or a different type of magazine or feed ramp or something. He invented a whole different way to propel a projectile down a barrel. He invented a whole new gun. It uses electricity, capacitors, water. I'm still trying to make heads or tails of it, but it's not the random gobbledygook sounding stuff that throws everybody else off and makes, makes them think he's nuts. To me, at least, this isn't, because I understand this. And it's different, it's weird, it's highly detailed. And I'm just starting to look through it now, and I want you to take a look, too. You tell me what you think. Is this the gun of the future? Is this guy really a genius? The trap game. The 1100. Where's my scores? I had them right here. All right, so last week I did... 22, a 20, a 24, and a 23 for an 89 out of 100. This week, I did a 19, a 22, a 23, and a 23. See, I again, I just wish I had another game or two in there, right? Like, I feel like that 25 is, like, right there, and then, you know, like, I'm leaving. But my arms do get tired. I'm going to dial it in. So that was an 87. I'm down two birds, but uh, 22, 23, 23, the last three games right there. You can see... By this video, you know, I'm, I'm not missing often, you know. And uh, it feels great. And uh, I love the gun. And it's a, it's I'm dialing this one in. That's it. I'm going to shoot this one religiously. And together we're going to watch these scores rise. And hopefully, I'm not giving up on YouTube. I'm going to come out with some more content. But the numbers, my numbers are terrible. But I'm hanging in there. And uh, see you all real soon. Later.